We've, uh, we've only got one bin today. I've got scales in there, I'll, I'll weigh it. So we've got 36 kilos of food waste here. Well, it's 48 kilograms including the bin. This thing will safely lift 30 kilos without any assistance. So if I put this bin on there, it's 48 kilos, I've got to do some grunt work. So to lift that extra 18 kilograms, I don't want to do that. So what I'm doing today is I'm just going to throw some of this food waste in here by hand. It's a bit sloppy, it doesn't smell too bad. But that's it for now. And uh, I'll hose the bin off. And wow, look at the color. Spread this around. And I'll use this bin to come over and get some mulch from the mulch bay over there. I've got 36 kilograms of food waste over there in the, in the composter and I'm just going to get a bin full of wet mulch which is about 46 kilos because I, I weighed it the other day and I'll throw that on top, we can close the composter and walk away. This is single grind mulch from the Shoal Bay dump waste disposal facility. Single grind, $20 a cubic metre. Trailer load here. If you come and have a look a bit closer, it's, it's still got sticks in it. They'll all break down. It's really good. A lot of the waste that we get in Darwin is, is palm fronds. They go through the, the mulcher and it's really good stuff for microbes to grow in because they get in and around the uh, that and that mixes with the food waste and it, it you know after your 10 or 12 weeks you're going to get some really nice compost out of your mix I prefer a long handled pitchfork. I can use it here. I use it there. Short handles fine for some people, but it works for me. I reckon that'll do. Okay, see you back at the composter. Just a handful. smells earthy. I can't reach the bit at the bottom. <laughs> nice. It smells good. It's earthy. And I'll just give that a water now. It'll trickle through. When I see water coming out of the base or I'm sick of standing here holding the hose, I'll uh, stop watering. But I'll give it a good drink now. Water, the giver of life. Everything depends on water. And here we're using it to, well, close our loop. We've got this food waste. It's going into a composter with mulch that's also finished its that part of its life cycle. The tree's grown or the palm from and it's dropped and it's gone to the mulcher and so it's come to us, the food waste and the mulch, put them together. We've already got this thing activated, this composter. There's microbes that are doing their work in there. Every week we'll give it a stir and we'll churn this thing and we'll mix the microbes and they'll be happy, we'll give it water, keep it moist and then 
we'll end up with compost for our no dig gardening. We throw it on the ground. The ground's terrible around here. In the dry season, it's like concrete. Throw our compost on the ground and we can plant directly in it. It's friable, you can plant, it's easy to plant, things, uh, roots easily established. It's vibrant growth and uh, then we can pull it out, it's friable, it's easy to remove. And you can get two crops easily out of a, a load of compost. So rather than sending it to landfill, we can create something from it, including jobs. So I built this composter a long time ago and I sort of, we've got mesh here, but uh, woo, uh, I haven't quite got the mesh on the back. So vermin can get in there if they so choose, but they haven't been getting in there. If vermin did get in there, then they're not gonna nest. They're gonna have a feed and go because they can't nest there. We're, we're mixing this thing every week and it's stirring it all up. So they're not, if there's humans around, they're certainly not gonna feel safe enough to go and have babies there. So still his cage composter is working really well for us. I tie the lids down because we get gusts, storm gusts, and they come in and whew, composter number one, I've come in and the lid's been flipped up. So these days we tie all the lids down just to look after them. So these stillage cage composters are the composters we're sort of concentrating on. We've got our processes developed around these things. What they are, I think that's sort of four or five mil galvanized wire. It's, it's a cage that uh, comes flat packed. You open it up, we lay our vermin mesh on it and then clip that in place, close it up, put a lid on it. You've got a really good composter. It's also a connection to the ground. So if there's any worms, and they probably are in there now, it's been used for six months, this composter. There's worms in the soil there, uh, and they're in the bottom part of the, the mix. So there's a connection to the ground. It's full of microbes. We're using it for that part of the cycle we want to fix is our doing something with our food waste. And so these stillage cage composters we're setting them up so that we can use them in an easy process to manage them, create jobs, come along with a post hole digger, uh, an auger, and stir them. And uh, that way, you know, it's, it's at hip height. It's all very safe. You hold onto the auger, ream it around a little bit. It mixes, rather than having three composters and shifting them from bay to bay to bay, which requires a lot of grunt work, it's, it's far easier to manage these things. So I reckon there's a good case to see these composters being used globally. They're, they're readily available. They're affordable. It doesn't take much to get them up and running. They're easy to manage. And what you get from them is just priceless. You get community participation. You get your food waste looked after. You get jobs and you, you get rubbish trucks off the road. We don't want our waste going to landfill like it is at the moment. In, in Darwin we're only recycling sort of 5% of our waste and food waste is a no-brainer. Half of our household waste, depending on the household of course, is food waste. You mix that food waste with paper and cardboard and you can make yourself really good compost in the garden. No dig gardening.